restored to the House. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Speaker. I call the Honourable Mark Mitchell. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And it's my pleasure to take a um, statutes amendment bill. And uh, the Minister did very well to get his composure back. Uh, as I'm not sure whether it was the, he hadn't read the speech or whether it was something that his colleague said to him. But, um, but anyway, and I, and I, and I do, have, uh, do feel his pain because it's a very, this statutes amendment bill is actually a very important bill. But the reality of it is, um, is it, it's, an, it's, it's an omnibus bill, but it makes minor technical changes. So um, it's not like it's just for those that, um, that have got nothing to better to do on a Thursday evening than to watch Parliament TV. Um, it's not a bill that we're going to debate in great depth around each of these changes, because it's an omnibus bill. They're very small, my, minor technical changes, and the Parliament uses a bill like this to be able to make a lot of changes uh, with the, through the passage of oh, one bill, and it saves and it saves uh, it saves the Parliament a lot of time. Um, if you will bear with me, uh, Madam Speaker, I did because I was, I was going through um, uh, some of the changes: the Terrorism Suppression Act 2002, the Veterans Support Act 2014, and I want to acknowledge that we still have the um, Minister of Defence in the House. Uh, we still have the Minister of Justice. Um, and we've been, and we had a very heartfelt uh, speech from uh, one of my colleagues, um, Hareti Hapanga, and her relating to her brother's service as well. And I just wanted to very quickly touch on the fact that um, when I saw the Terrorism Suppression Act, it reminded me of a lot of work that I'd done with um, uh, David Shearer when we both sat on the Foreign Affairs, Defence, and Trade Select Committee. And I was lucky enough in our last recess to travel down to South Sudan um, and visit. David Shearer, who is the Secretary, UN Secretary General's special representative there, which means that he's heading up uh, UNMIS, the UN mission in South Sudan. To give you an idea of the challenge that he has, um, South Sudan geographically is about the size of France. It has no uh, infrastructure, I mean no infrastructure. It has clay roads, and its main supply route is the White Nile, uh, which comes from uh, the port of Sudan through Khartoum and down to, um, to Juba. He's got, um, he's got tribal warfare that's been going on for centuries. Uh, he's got uh, corrupt politicians that he has to deal with. Uh, he's got a civil, he's right in the middle of a civil war trying to broker uh, a peace agreement. And he's got 160,000 internally displaced, uh, displaced people that uh, the UN are actually providing uh, security for and protecting. And uh, I was lucky enough to go with him to go and visit one of those camps so that I could have a clear understanding of what they're actually dealing with. I want to acknowledge him and I want to acknowledge the leadership that he's providing in what is a very difficult situation. But the reason why I was there is because uh, in my previous role as Minister of Defence, I had received a request from him asking for more support from our New Zealand Defence Forces. And, uh, and at that time, I thought that was the, definitely the right thing to do, and I signed it off. I was pleased to see that uh, the incoming government and, uh, and the minister continued with that commitment. And um, so I wanted to go down there, I wanted to visit them and I wanted to see how they were doing on the ground, the challenges that they were facing. And I really wanted to be sure, as someone that doesn't have a, a high level of um, confidence in the UN, um, I wanted to make sure that our people were being supported properly from New York. <coughs> and uh, and you know, the, the great thing about David Shearer is if anyone can get think, something, achieve something down there, a man like that will do it. But this, this is, um, I, um, it's a great valedictory for our former colleague, but uh, is, is this relating to the Armed Forces Discipline well, Act? Well, I thought it was sort the of... the Terrorism Suppression Act? Well, I'm, 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 not, not, I'm uh, having some difficulty identifying... Identify, no, I understand. I, I, I understand that, the, I understand uh, that Madam Speaker, and I thank you for your tolerance. Thank you. Um, because I knew that I was stretching it a bit it in terms of last, bringing it back to the Terrorism Suppression Act and the and the Veterans Support Act. Thank you. But I wanted to acknowledge our people down there yes. and the work that they're doing. Um, this is, as I say, this is a highly technical bill and, it, um, and we go right from the Terrorism Suppression Act of 2002 right through to the Winston Churchill Memorial Trust Act um, of 1965. I mean, you know, people might wonder what that's about. I can see Reno Tirukatni over there. He's definitely wondering what it's about. So quite simply what it is, it's just Clause 155 provides that Part 42 um, amends the Winston Churchill Memorial Trust Act of 1965. The, the clauses 156 and 157 repeal the long title and insert a purpose provision that is based 
on the repealed long title in section 18.1a. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about clause 158. So clause 158 amends section 13 to add new functions to the board. The amendment enables the board to spend money to increase public awareness of the fund and to promote the other functions of the board and the purpose of this act. Actually, this, this is actually really important because what it means is that the board can function a lot more efficiently and they're obviously um, funding uh, you know, projects uh, and, and, um, and local groups. So, you know, although these are small and technical, uh, and I come back to the Minister's opening comments, they do often make a real difference in terms of governance and how people are actually trying to go about their work. And, and we often have debates in this House about red tape and compliance. So it's actually nice to be able to make technical changes that gets rid of some of that, um, that red tape and compliance. If I go back to the Veterans Support Act, because um, there's been a lot of talk, we've had a lot of contact with the veterans uh, over the last few weeks the, with our repatriation uh, re, um, uh, project that's, that's been ongoing. And um, again, just want to acknowledge our New Zealand Defence Force personnel and the great work that they're doing. Uh, the veterans, myself and the Minister had a talk about this the other night. The veterans, of course, had a big part to play in that. Um, if it wasn't their work over decades, actually, in terms of uh, bringing petitions to this House and making submissions to a select committee, actually, we would never be repatriating. Um, they, they had a massive part to play alongside some of those families as well. I want to recognise them, acknowledge them. Clause 150 of the Veterans Support Act 2014 provides that Part 41 amends the Veterans Support Act 2014, and Clause 151 amends the definition of a working day in Section 7 to exclude the relevant province's anniversary day. This aligns the definition of working day in the Act with several other legislative definitions of working day. It will avoid confusion about when applications and correspondence may be processed and when statutory time frames start and finish. So another good example of, um, of, a, of a minor technical change, but one that actually uh, will make it much easier for people to understand uh, what paperwork needs to be submitted and, what, and how they actually engage in the process. Clause 153 removes a reference to an ACC entitlement in section 2711. Section 2711 mirrors a provision of the Accident Compensation Act 2001, but the provision does not apply to the Veterans Support Act 2014. So another very good example of um, where the, where the Veterans Support Act 2014 was not aligned with an earlier act, uh, which is one that um, obviously is a, is a much bigger Act and ha but has a significant impact in people's lives, and that's the Accident Compensation Act of 2001. Clause 154 amends Clause 2 of Schedule 1 to allow for certain older pensions to be adjusted to keep pace with the New Zealand Consumer Price Index or the CPI. The pensions are those payable under Section 29A of the War Pensions Act 1954 and Part 5A of the War Pensions Regulations. 1956. I mean, this, this is very important because this does relate directly to uh, pensions, making sure that they are that they do remain aligned with our CPI. The pensions are preserved by Clause 2 of Schedule 1, as if the Veterans Support Act 2014 had not been passed. But it is appropriate to allow for their adjustment in line with the more modern approach taken in Section 31 of automatic updating in accordance with the CPI. Very That's good. Well, r rather than requiring the rates to be adjusted at the same, to the same effect by amendment regulations oh, every year. So that stopped actually having to go through a regulatory yeah. process, and it's actually now just an automatic um, annual update. Oh, so, um, so that's a very it's sensible. Too. It's technical, but it is very, um, it is very sensible. Now, if I come to, um, if I come to, Madam Speaker. The State-Owned Enterprise Act. This is another one that I saw Reno Tirukatni. I know that he's got a probably. He seems very interested in this one as well. So let's talk about the State-Owned Enterprises um, Act, 1986. Clause one, two. No, but I, if I have time, I'll come back to that. Oh, I'm running out of time. Okay. Clause one, two, seven provides that Part 37 amends the State-Owned Enterprises Act, 1986. 
Clause 128, repeal yeah, section 30. I thank 30. the member. Um, we, we can all read that. Um, we probably don't need you to read that out to us. It, it would be much better to uh, be explaining the impact of the changes to those clauses rather no, than. I understand. It was, more for, the, it was so. more for the viewers, Madam thank Speaker, you. and, yep. and for Mr. Many Tiri Kartne, um, yeah, the many yeah. viewers <laughs> watching thank this. Thank you. It's been very um, entertaining. Thank, thank you. you. Right. Thank, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, call, uh, Madam Speaker. I call Reno <clears throat> Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, I'm